All right, let's see here. Chapter 9, the pipe hobby. Collecting pipe is an old and established pastime. Men were collecting pipes when postage stamp had not yet been invented. Indeed, the requirements of pipe collecting are among the simplest of any hobby. Any smoker can be said to have a pipe collection if he has more than one pipe. A pipe collection need not be large, nor must it consist of any expensive pipes. While admittedly, a hand-carved meerschaum may cost hundreds of dollars. A plain $3 briar possessing special personal meaning to the smoker certainly deserves equal respect as part of his collection. Collecting pipes offers Collecting pipe differs from collecting stamps, coins, and similar objects in that pipes can always be used. The hobbyist pipes serve a double purpose since they are both items of special interest and instruments capable of providing an enjoyable smoke. Most interest, interested pipe smokers become collectors sooner or later. This does not mean they assemble a hundred or more pipes, but every smoker eventually learns that he could have at least four or five pipes and smoke them alternately. Soon the smoker finds himself with eight, ten, or fifteen pipes, so that he has quite naturally and progressively became a collector on a small scale. Not all pipes which might grace a collection can be smoked. Many of them are too old and too fragile to withstand regular smoking, yet the beauty and history of such pipes might give them a great value. Every pipe collector usually separates his pipes into two classifications, those which can be re regularly smoked and those which could remain safely in their cases or behind glass. The neophyte collector should learn all he can about pipes, both modern and historical. Libraries will have some books on the subject, but generally pipe literature is rather scarce. Pipe catalogs supplied by manufacturers also often contain valuable information. Your favorite pipe shop might also be helpful or a local pipe club if one exists in your community. In most large cities there are museums and historical societies many of which have your pipe have pipe collections or pipe exhibits on display. You will want to know about different types of briars, stem sizes, shapes, and other details of pipe lore worth studying. It is a good idea to add only good quality pipes to your collection. Careful selection and an appreciation of quality will start you off the road in becoming a pipe connoisseur. This is not reason to limit yourself to briar pipes, pipes of meerschaum, clay, various woods, even corn cobs and water pipes will liven up your collection. The older carved meerschaum pipes are both beautiful and expensive. The meerschaums of 40 or 50 years ago can still be found at reasonable prices. Also available are novelty pipes made of such materials as stone, glass and ceramic. You may often pick them up as souvenirs of excursions or holidays. Your assemblage of pipes can even expand to include bizarre pipes from the Orient or Africa. Aboriginal native pipes and ancient pre-Columbian pipes if you can get your hands on them before the museum does. Whereas those pipes be obtained, where can these pipes be obtained? In facing this problem, the true collector must show both ingenuity and imagination. The search may begin by first visiting the local pipe shop, then hunting through local curio, curio and antique shops. There you will probably find the most common and the most plentiful pipes such as the Central European porcelain pipes popular a century ago, but usually even the porcelain bowl, a cherry wood stem or a bone or horn bit. The bowl may be painted and the pipe decorated with cords or tassels are not expensive and a few of them will add color and variety to any collection. 
you may turn up a pipe which you suspect is quite old. Try to trace its try to trace its history as far back as you can. It may have some association with a historical figure which might make it valuable. How much would you give for a Mark Twain corn cob, or for a church warden, smoked by Alexander Hamilton? The collector's fun really begins when he takes an afternoon off to go sleuthing around sh pipe shops and antique dealers searching for that rare and treasured pipe which surprisingly he will often find. The search for a better pipe goes on and on. Here is one of the extremely complicated pipe design on file in the U.S. Patent Office. And here's a picture of the pipe there. You probably can't make it out all that great. But the pipe obvious should by no means limit himself to ancient or historical pipes. If you see a pipe you particularly like in the tobacconist window, add it to your collection. A collection of fine modern pipes can be especially rewarding because all the pipes in it can be smoked. Evaluating pipes. If you deem a pipe worthy of being included in your pipe collection, it matters little whether the pipe is new or whether it has been smoked. However, it is pre if its previous owner have smoked it to death, cracking either the stem or bowl, it will be worth somewhat less since it will then have to be permanently relegated to the showcase. As an antique or as with antique or art objects, the value of the pipe depends on its age, its condition, its make or manufacturer, the quality of the workmanship, the scarcity of the particular type, and the current demand. Since few people would be expert on these points, since since few people would be expert on all these points about any particular pipe, it is easy to see why there are so few recognized pipe appraisers. The pipe's price is usually governed by the strength of the potential buyer's desire and by how much he is willing to pay. The collector may well find it difficult to determine how much the pipe and how much an antique pipe is really worth. No catalog or collector's pipes or antique pipe values exist to inform him. Even attempting to quote a fair price for certain pipes of pipes is not easy. Before, because no two pipes are exactly alike, they may be similar in many ways, yet the age, size, color, overall condition of the individual specimen may greatly affect its value. Old pipes retaining their original condition are the most valuable. If evidence turns up that some of the original parts, such as the stem and the band, have been replaced, the pipe loses some value. This can easily be detected if the bowl shows signs of having been smoked, but the stem displays no teeth marks. It's a good bet in such cases that the stem has been replaced. The bowl of the pipe and the decoration largely set the price of the pipe. A plain undecorated bowl naturally costs the least. Handwork is also worth more than mass-produced work. A porcelain bowl decorated by a transfer or decal should cost less than a hand-painted one. An elaborately hand-carved meerschaum or briar, of course, always counts as a valuable item. The best advice for a beginning collector is to patronize reputable pipe dealers. Their prices are likely to be fairly close to the real value of the pipe. This holds true to both modern pipes and older pipes. No one can deny a certain thrill one experiences in rummaging around antique shops in the hope of finding a bargain. But unless the hobbyist knows his subject well, he may very well pay an outrageous price for for a common specimen. If you spot a pipe which appeals to you, but you are not sure of its value, ask another collector to appraise it for you. If his appraisal agrees with yours, you can be sure of a reasonably good buy. However, if you see a bargain, grab it. Otherwise, your fellow pipe smoker may decide to make 
a nice addition to his own collection. Alrighty, that was chapter 9.